Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so very much to the Planning Institute of Jamaica for having me at this, your annual economic growth forum. Under the theme, technological disruptions supporting growth. The COVID pandemic has been a disruptor in our lives in so many ways. But guess what? As typical Jamaicans, we are a resilient and creative people. We know how to turn our hands to make fashion. We know how to innovate. Jamaica's ongoing economic success depends on our ability to harness technological advances to improve existing businesses, create new products and markets, enhance our daily lives. We certainly are not in this alone as a people, and we have benefited from learning what other nations have done to leverage technology to advise, advance their own economies. This calls for a shift in mindset, in leadership, as we continue to work in a VUCA world. We do exist in a world, my friends, <laughs> that is volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous in so many ways. But notwithstanding, we are resilient and creative. Who remembers the Nokia 3310 phone? I certainly had one, and it was one of the strongest cell phones I've ever had. That company was a market leader, but it was disrupted by innovators such as BlackBerry, Apple, Samsung, amongst others. Nokia experienced volatility based on the rate of change that took place. It experienced uncertainty and was unable to sufficiently predict behavior change, such as the need for more friendly user interfaces. It experienced complexity and ambiguity in handling chaos, multifaceted effects, and a change in reality of what real human behavior had evolved to be. As a government, as businesses, we certainly do not want to be disrupted or be so-called so pushed out as Nokia was or made irrelevant as Nokia was. But we want to have this kind of mindset change that will allow us to become even more innovative at our service delivery. And so we have to develop an adaptive mindset, have a vision, network and collaborate, develop our people and certainly design for the future. Now, Henry Ford once said, if I had asked people what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. So you know Henry Ford, he's the one who came up with these vehicles, the Ford motor vehicles that, that some persons drive. He was indeed an innovator, a disruptor. Likewise, in Jamaica, we have our dressmakers, our farmers, shopkeepers, etc., who want to have successful businesses where they can comfortably take care of their families. They want, in fact, we all want to have a nation where we innovate and create, where we leverage technology to become even more efficient at what we do. There are several forms of technology that are being used in our society, including free Wi-Fi, Jamaica Eye, and others, and these are great. But what we need, my dear friends, is digital disruption. That is absolutely what we need, which is underpinned by disruptive technology, where innovation significantly alters the way consumers, industries, and businesses operate. A truly disruptive technology not only changes the way that people think, but also the way that they operate. Let us think about that for a little bit. We do have drivers of this change that we're talking about, and the drivers of change are multifaceted. As it relates to demographics, we have rapid ur urban migration and urbanization that is taking place. People are leaving country to come to town increased human lifespan. And of course, we all have become global citizens because we operate on any given day as though we are operating from Tokyo, China, in other places. That's just what has happened. 
as a society, we have security and privacy concerns. We have adopted a digital lifestyle. And in fact, some of us can't even go to our beds without looking at the cell phone before going to sleep. We sleep with a cell phone in our hands or on our pillows. By the way, that's not good. Let us, however, be mindful of those underconnected citizens that are in our society. On the economic front, there is growing debt and rising income inequality. There are new talent models and the open talent economy, but these drivers have influenced the various types of technology that we use, that we think to use, as we certainly need to employ to improve our way of life, that certainly will maximize the opportunities for people where no one is left, left behind. We want none of our vulnerable groups to be left behind. Left behind. Services, we want to have better service delivery, resilient, secure, quality data. Also, enabling environments such as our regulatory systems. All of these are what we want to have in place. The result being new products, new markets, efficient work, absolutely. Increased profitability, happier citizens. That is what we want. Jeff Bezos, who is the founder and CEO of Amazon said, we see our customers as invited guests to a party and we are the hosts. It's our job every day to make every important aspect of the customer experience a little bit better. Here's my question. What kind of experience, what kind of customer experience do you want to create? What kind of customer experience do we as a government, as businesses want to create? This requires a 3D thinking, human-centered design, data, digital, working together to improve the interactions of government, business, citizens, making personalized services a reality. Now, innovative service delivery is one of the things that we need, of course, Bearing in mind the 3D thinking, design, data, digital. Underpinned by technologies such as big data, open data, digital identity, predictive analytics, digital automation, augmented intelligence and augmented reality, as well as cloud computing. And the list is by no means exhaustive. As a people, what we want is a no-touch government, not a government that requires us to join too many lines. None of us really wants to be in any line. And so how about automatic transfer of data, birth data, death data, without the need for citizens to have to go to the Registrar General's Department, without us having to go to the Accountant General's Department, when somebody dies, why do we need to take a death certificate over to the Administrator General's apartment even? It is already traumatic on the, on the, the family. So let us have a no-touch government, certainly touching lives in different ways, but cutting out those unnecessary processes. We want to have a once-only government that uses a single digital identity to conduct online citizen interactions instead of us as citizens having to log into several places, a tax admin portal, customs portal, uh, you know, all over the place, a centralized place where we log in and that's it, we would then be able to access government services. We also want our government to be data smart, anticipatory, leveraging big data and augmented intelligence. Big data is defined as Certainly, a collection of data that is large, complex, rapidly changing, that enables better and more informed decision and policy making, certainly through the analysis of the data that is presented. Augmented intelligence, according to Gartner, is a human centered partnership model of people and artificial intelligence working together to enhance cognitive performance. So it is not about the computer doing everything, which is what artificial intelligence primarily speaks to, but augmented intelligence where 
as a people, we are able to take on that body of work where the computer assists and enables us in providing the services that we need to do. And here are some of the cases of how the government can be come even more data smart and anticipatory in leveraging the power of augmented intelligence and big data, identifying the spread of diseases early. Certainly we know that that is absolutely needed. How about listening to social media for public feedback on what the, of topics pertaining to the government? For example, the prime minister spoke so much last night in, in, in his um, presentation about the, the, the COVID situation. How about listening to what social media is saying about the own your own device application and other such? How about responding to emergency situations? Generating dynamic data dashboards, certainly to assist in answering citizen questions. These are indeed critical to our interactions as a people and certainly for the government to serve its people. Drive marketing and sales. We like to try and buy things. We like to try on the shoes and thing. And here it is that, again, this is not even new, but you know, leveraging augmented reality and mobile apps to be able to try on glasses and see what it would look like on us before we even go into a store and waste time trying on 20 different glasses. Improving customer service, where there is use of chatbots to answer direct questions and certainly have humans answer complex queries. Last week, for example, I had the occasion to call the Jamaica Public Service about something. And when I called the toll free number, I was told that I was 54th in line. I couldn't imagine sitting and waiting all the way in that queue. So I decided to go to the website and click on the chat feature, at which time it indicated I was ninth. So I said, okay, not quite being so sure if it would work. I decided to let both of them run. And indeed I got through on the chat quickly, easily sitting at my desk, it was very easy. And by the time I was completed with that online transaction, the phone told me that I was now 34th in line. There you have it. Identifying fraudulent activities, predicting crime, predicting traffic congestion. All of these are things that we can use as a people to enhance our lives. We also want to have an augmented government. What does this mean? This is new. This is simply government leveraging augmented reality applications and capabilities in delivering our service to people. Augmented reality really is just real world augmented by computer generated data and visuals. That's really what it is. It overlays real world with the computer generated things that make it seem 3D, three dimensional that we're actually in that particular world. Here are some applications on the, of the, 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 the augmented uh, reality. Snapshot showroom. You can point your device. And by the way, Wayfair in the States also has that. Point your device to overlay a furniture in a room to make decisions as to whether to buy, to figure out if this thing, how does it look in your place, you know, patterns and things like that. Then there's crime spot. Again, point your device, that's your mobile device, at a street location to create a safe and secure score based on local crime data. This now leverages big data, open data possibly, depending on what it is. How about Dr. Mole? I thought this one was interesting. Point your device at your skin for a cursory diagnosis of whether a blemish appears to be cancerous. Who knows, it's something for the doctors to consider. We also have cases of augmented emergency management and augmented transportation security. Augmented reality app being provided to citizens in certain emergency zones. Think about, you know, where we have bushfires and things breaking out, uh, providing visualizations regarding the severity the location, the path, the, the potential damage, possibly based on previous trends. For example, up at Jacksonville, where pretty much every year there is a bushfire up there, you know, uh, the government would be able to utilize this augmented uh, emergency management solution to allow us to have that kind of visual into what is or what could be, let's say. Airport screening agents have been using augmented reality to verify the identity of passengers. We don't do that in Jamaica, but it's something for us to seriously consider. Passenger, mapping passenger face to their ID, uh, the name to the boarding pass, you know, creating um, um, 3D visuals in real time. This, this has been used across the globe uh, using Google Glasses, et cetera. 
Jamaica is a tourism mecca of the world. How about using augmented reality also in our tourism sector, where we offer our guests information rich tours that they are able to navigate the hills and turns of Jamaica, where they're able to have their own language overlaid within the app. So if they're coming from China and speaking Mandarin, for example, then it, it, it speaks to them in their own language, helps them to understand the surroundings. And as good old Jamaicans, we know how to turn our hands make fashion. We push some advertising in there as well so that we can make some money. So this, my friends, is innovative operation, innovative service delivery. And now we're moving on to innovative operations that leverages 3D thinking. Remember, design, data, digital. Again, similar type of technologies as before. We're seeing a trend where there are shared services. Organizations want to improve in their own service delivery. So instead of back offices just being routine work, what they're moving towards is enterprise insight generators. Um, these offices becoming more, more analytical, providing insight into the business. X as a service, pay as your go model, pay for so software as a service, platform as a service that allows businesses to scale at need. There are also digital factories where, which is a production facility where people, machines, raw materials, products share information about the various stages of the production process, utilizing smart sensors, cloud storage, big data analytics. Finally, innovative workforce. And we know that we surely do want our farmers or white collar workers or blue collar workers all across the nation to be able to leverage technology to their own benefit and to the benefit of the organizations and the nation. Again, leveraging 3D thinking, utilizing technologies such as big data, predictive analytics, cloud computing. Now the BBC has a talent cloud. This is not new, but it's something for us to consider here in Jamaica. The government of Canada actually also has one, which is a database or a pool of freelancers on a platform that the company chooses or pre-select, yes, as their first choice when work needs to be done. Then we have the internal talent marketplace, which is hosted on a technology platform that connects employees with opportunities inside and outside the organization. So can you imagine as what is happening in COVID now where we're all being constrained. We have to move quickly to provide solutions. But then you discover that you have capacity in the rest of your organization. Persons who have skills that are needed, but perhaps they are not being as utilized to the extent that we would want. Internal talent marketplace platforms, again, not new, but they do allow for persons to become upskilled and cross-skilled and contribute their skills. Managers to be able to use to deploy, motivate, retain employees workforce analytics as well is key. We have a whole wealth of HR data that certainly we need to use to harness, harvest, to verify skills and competences, to predict workforce trends. So we will know what kinds of talents will be needed later on. Here's an exciting one for me also, just in time to the service, which we've seen playing out so much, especially in recent times again, which is a public workforce not just central government, but a public workforce of flexible talent that work together based on the needs of a particular project. Partnership talent, borrowed talent, freelance talent, open source talent. This is a pool of people who they don't really work for, in fact, they don't work for government. In our sense, we say that they are private sector, but they are part of the value chain. And we've seen based on what the prime minister announced yesterday with respect to the ends, the, the, the curfew um, delivery up private sector partnering with the government to be able to deliver on a service that certainly as a nation continues to provide this disruptive technology, yet we're having a digital disruption happening right before us as a result of what COVID has created. And again, all of this requires a shift in mindset. As a people, we are required to be adaptive, predictive and analytical, agile, innovative, creatively manage our talent, and absolutely being citizen and client focused. Ladies and gentlemen, let us continue to make Jamaica the place of choice to live, work, 
raise families and do business. I thank you.